I am talking to you from my channel Learning Anatomy and uh, today I will talk uh, to you about the connection of the cerebellum and the cerebellum is connected to other parts of the CNS by various afferent and efferent fibers that are grouped together on each side into three large bundles or peduncles. These are the superior, middle and inferior cerebellar peduncles. They respectively connect the cerebellum. This is the cerebellum in the picture. You see the red laser with this uh, with the corresponding parts of the um, brain stem from up downwards. This is the midbrain. This is the pons and the lowermost part of the brain stem, middle oblongata. So here is the superior cerebellar peduncle connects this cerebellum with the midbrain and the middle cerebellar peduncle here it is this one connects the cerebellum with the pons and the inferior cerebellar peduncle here it lies it connects the cerebellum with the middle oblongata so now the constituents of the cerebellar peduncles these are afferents or efferents afferents are anterior spinocerebellar and then the tecto cerebellar tract. Then the efferents are the cerebellorubral and the dentatothalamic. This dentatothalamic is very important. That is a dentato olivary and the vestigio reticular. So constituent of the middle cerebellar peduncle, efferents the pontocerebellar, which is part of the corticopontocerebellar pathway, and the efferents are the no efferents here. So the middle cerebellar peduncle has only the efferents, which is the ponto cerebellar, which is very important. So the constituents of inferior cerebellar peduncle, it has lots of efferents and few efferents as well. Efferents are posterior spinocerebellar pathway, cuneo cerebellar, olivo cerebellar, par olivo cerebellar vestibulocerebellar, reticulocerebellar, anterior external arcuate fibers, right geminocerebellar, stria medullaris. And the efferents of inferior cerebellar peduncle are cerebellovestibular, cerebello livery, and cerebello reticular. Then talking um, a bit detail of the important cerebellar afferent pathways, number one, and number two and number three are coming from the cerebral cortex, the efferents. And number one is a corticopontocerebellar pathway originated from all four lobes of the cortex, frontal, parietal, temporal, and the occipital. And it ends via pontine nuclei and mossy fibers to cerebellar cortex. Then number two is the cerebro olivo cerebellar, cerebro olivo cerebellar pathway it originates from all four lobes of the cortex and it ends via inferior olivary nuclei and climbing fibers to cerebellar cortex you note one thing this climbing fibers are involved only in this pathway cerebro olivary cerebro olivo cerebellar cerebro olivo cerebellar as here is the involvement of the olivary nuclei of the medulla oblongata all the other pathways involve the mossy fibers so this is a thing and uh, cerebro reticulo cerebellar it originates from sensory motor areas and ends via the reticular formation so let's see with the, the most important and the main cerebellar input this is via the Cortico ponto cerebellar pathway. This is the afferent. This, this, this is shown in the picture. Very important, clear picture. Cortico pontine neuron is lying here in the cortex of the cerebrum. And here, the fibers going down and down and down to the pontine nuclei. Here, you see the picture crossing the, to the opposite side, and each is the cerebellar cortex. And then number four, five, six, these are the pathways coming from the spinal cord. These afferents come from the spinal cord. Number four, cuneocerebellar. Number five, anterior spinocerebellar. And number six is the posterior spinocerebellar. Cuneocerebellar originate from joint receptors, muscle spindles, and tendon organs of the upper limb. And it tends through mossy fibers to cerebellar cortex. 
Number five, anterior spinocerebellar pathway originate from joint septors, muscle spindles, and tendon organs, and it ends through mossy fibers to cerebellar cortex. Number six, posterior spinocerebellar, it originates from joint receptors, muscle spindles, and tendon organs, and it ends through mossy fibers to cerebellar cortex. Number seven, vestibular nuclei, it control head movements, head movements and position. Control of head movements and position, and it originates from atrical, secule, and semicircular canals and ends at flocculonodular lobe via the mossy fibers. And other afferents are from the midbrain and from coming from the tectum and red nucleus of the midbrain. Ends at cerebellar cortex. So the, now the cerebellar efferent fibers, right? So see this bold sentence is very important. To total output of cerebellar cortex is through the axons of the Purkinje cells, right? So the total output of cerebellar cortex is through the axon of the Purkinje cells. Here you see, this is a Purkinje cell layer I taught you already in my previous lecture. This is lying in the Purkinje cell layer. These are the cell bodies, these are the dendrites, and this is the long axon, of the neurons, and this is going to the deep cerebellar nuclei. So majority of these axons terminate by synapsing on the neurons of the deep cerebellar nuclei. The axons of the neurons that form the cerebellar nucleus constitutes the efferent outflow from the cerebellum. Some of the Purkinje cell axons pass directly out of the cerebellum to the lateral vestibular nucleus. The efferent fibers from the cerebellum connect with the red nucleus, thalamus, vestibular complex, and reticular formation. So now the cerebellar efferent fibers, one by one, the very important. As the name suggests, globose, emboliform, rural pathways involved in the motor activity in the same side of the body, and the origin is from the involved named nuclei of the pathway, the globose, emboliform in this, and the rubral it means red nucleus, it ends at the contralateral red nucleus, then via cross rubral spinal tract to ipsilateral motor neuron in the spinal cord. And you note know, all the these efferent fibers from the cerebellum end at the ipsilateral site it's because uh, cerebellum is involved in the control of the ipsilateral side. Each hemisphere, like the right hemisphere, controls the right side of the body. The right left hemisphere of the cerebellum controls the left side of the body. So the dentatothalamic pathway is number two. This is very, very important because dentate nucleus is the largest nucleus, most Latin, the largest nucleus of the cerebellum, dentatothalamic pathway. It is involved in motor activity on the same side of the body. It is the major output, output tract of the cerebellum. Its origin is from dentate nucleus and it ends in thalamus at its contralateral ventrolateral nucleus and then reaches to contralateral cerebral cortex. Let's see it, dentatothalamic tract mainly. This is the main cerebellar output. And you see, this is the dentate nucleus you identify as we talked already in the structure of the cerebellum in my previous lecture with you. And this is the crumpled bag appearance of the dentate nucleus and the fibers from this dentatothalamic going this through the superior cerebellar peduncle and reaching the opposite side of the opposite thalamus, I mean, and from here contralaterally to the, this cerebral cortex, right? And the corticospinal tract crosses midline and serves to control motor neurons of the spinal cord on the same side, right? Here you see the crossing again, of already discussed with you this track, corticospinal, um, I'm on the track, corticospinal neuron lying here in the cortex, cerebral cortex, going down and down and down, and here it decussition of the pyramid, the great motor decussition in the middle of longata, and it going, and it, though the, so the same side is controlled this way. And number three, vestigial reticular pathway. It is involved in muscle tone on the same side of the body. Origin is from vestigial nucleus and it ends at reticular formation neuronal cells. From here, the reticular spinal tract influences motor neurons of spinal cord on the same side of the body. 
so the vestigial vestibular pathway origin is vestigial nucleus responsible for ipsilateral extensor muscle tone and mainly at ipsilateral at and at contralateral lateral vestibular nuclei and mainly at ipsilateral and at contralateral lateral vestibular nuclei via vestibulospinal tract to motor neurons of the spinal cord on the same side of the body and you see all these four tracks or pathways involved and at the same side of the body control of the cerebellum ipsilateral thank you very much for uh, watching my video please subscribe my channel and uh, do subscribe it and comment down below and share thank you very much for the support